some people feel sold when they make a purchase and other people feel delighted when they bought. So even hmm. if it's a doctor. Welcome to the Next Level Income Show, where it's our goal to take your income, your investments, and your life to the next level. I'm your host, Chris Larson. If you haven't yet, get a copy of our book for free at our website, nextlevelincome.com. That's www.nextlevelincome.com. Just click on the book link and I'll even send you a copy if you put your address in. What would happen if you were properly coached to navigate past any objection? Joe Marcoux is the founder of the SOS Dojo, and Joe's going to join us today on the Next Level Income Show. What does SOS stand for? It stands for Sales Objective System, and a dojo is a place where members go to not only train, but they also spar. And it's this sparring that help, helps improve their ability to communicate and help their prospects cross the starting line to get that they help that they are looking for. Listen in, whether you're already a sales professional or whether you're an entrepreneur looking to expand your business, or even a professional, like a doctor or a surgeon, as we talked about in today's episode, because you're going to learn how to improve the quality of your business as well as the revenue that you generate. Joe, welcome to the show. Chris, thanks very much for having me. It's an honor to be here. Yeah, and I'm excited. I, uh, you know, spend in nearly two decades, probably more if you count the fact that I, I sold wrapping paper door to door when I was 12 years old. So, oh, that's um, awesome. It's more like three decades in, in sales in my life. I love having a sales specialist on. And look, if you're, if you're in sales and you're listening to this, stay, stay with us through the show. You're going to learn something here. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting, Joe. What I found is even people that are seasoned sales professionals, um, they don't always sharpen the ax. They don't always focus on selling. And then I find that there's other people that say, you know, oh, I don't, I don't have to sell in my business. So I'd love to get into some of that with you here <laughs> today. But um, if you would share with the audience a little bit more about your background. Sure. So I started off in the exercise equipment retail business at the age of 17. And by the age of 20, I opened up my first exercise equipment store. And I think about this as you know, now in my fifties, going back at 20 years old with full of ver, I'm going to sell high ticket back then to help people live a better quality of life through the benefits of the tools of exercise. And I had to skill really quickly. I was passionate about it. I knew uh, the, the power of what exercise did for people. And I understood the equipment. What I didn't know was that sales was a structured conversation. And over the years, Sales has evolved. Sales has changed. And now, more than ever, it requires a better conversation ability. So from there, going from retail uh, at the age of 20 all the way to 25, I did a merger with a company in Canada where we went from seven locations to 38 in 18 months. So, of course, learning skills to scale and systems and operations and sales in and of themselves are the oxygen business. So you need systems that you can actually duplicate and measure. And sales without measuring your sales is a big problem that a lot of professionals have, entrepreneurs that know their products and or services so well. And yet if we weren't measuring our, our system when I was younger, once we started measuring them, that's when we really started to take off. Yeah. And then... I sold um, the shares of my business in my late 20s, and I started working on the manufacturing side as a sales representative. And then I eventually wrote up uh, my first called Boutique Thinking in a Big Box World in 2007. Mm -hmm. And that changed everything for me where I started getting opportunities to go speak uh, all over the world. And lo and behold, I started getting niches above and beyond the exercise equipment space. It was health and fitness, then retail in general, then it was bicycles. And then it suddenly became automobiles to real estate, to coaching. So now I'm, it's, it's been a pleasure to be able to help so many people. So it literally started as a little retailer to now I'm online and and I it, I, I get opportunity to go and speak at different audiences. And now I get to speak with you and yours. No, I love it. And yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's it's interesting because I've always said that if you're a good salesperson, it enhances every area of your life because yeah. you learn you learn to communicate better, um, and you've you've applied your principles, Joe, across a variety of of industries as as you've just mentioned here. Um, why why is it so important to know sales 
and to really understand that process. Even if you think, well, let, let's give an example. Let's say you're a, um, I work with surgeons a lot. Okay. okay? Um, you know, so if you're, if you're a doctor, you may think, Hey, I'm, I'm a good, I'm a good surgeon. Um, I'm very good at my craft. That that's all that matters. I don't need, I don't need to sell. What would you say to somebody like that? That's, you know, a, a specialist, a true professional in their field and says, that's not really something that I need to do. So the first thing that I always do, and I appreciate you bringing up this question, Chris, is I love, I love to acknowledge and then ask the question. So it's the two-step process of what we call the sales objection system. So when somebody says, well, I don't need to do this because they're a specialist, they're a doctor and whatnot. First of all, I think it's great if you're a, if you're a specialist. And then I would, I would say, how important is it for your guest or what some people would call their prospect? I love to call them a guest. How important is it for your guest to feel compelled and comfortable in their purchase buying process? that experience because yeah. some people feel sold yeah when they make when they make a when they make a purchase and other people feel delighted when they bought so even mm. if it's a doctor even if it's a doctor and they're the expert just because you're the expert and you know everything that doesn't mean that the person that is giving you their money feels compelled to want to refer other people to you and so a good a good salesperson gets to a point where your guest is influenced and persuaded in such a way where they feel, I have to give you this money because I feel good about it, as opposed to, man, I just feel like I got sold. So the question is not not just how many sales did you make today or what are your numbers? What are, what are your referral rates? you getting in the long term and more uh, importantly what are your reviews for example like how do your clients your customers because that's what happens they they go guest and then they transition to to becoming a customer when they give you money how do they feel about you and that's where people that understand that sales is a skill that is perishable which is why you need to practice it yeah when we when we properly understand that what do you think happens the long-term benefit of our own businesses. Yeah. 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 It, it, yeah. It improves. And I love what you said, you know, sales, sales is the oxygen of any business because it, yeah. it drives revenue. And I mean, look, that's, we're all about driving revenue, um, specifically NOI in, in real estate and trying to drive the value up, you know, in a sales career, you know, it was all about top line. It was like, Hey, you gotta, you gotta sell, 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 um, yeah. whatever, you know, and, and we were paid on commission and we had a quota, um, for those top line numbers. And by the way, you mentioned the sales objective system. Um, I got your sales objective system here pulled up on my other screen. And if you're listening, we'll make sure we, we uh, show you how you can get that too as well. And I want to dive deeper into that, Joe. But um, you, know, you mentioned metrics. So you mentioned it earlier. Um, why is it so important to measure thing um, aspects of the sales process? And is it always the same thing for, for individual um, businesses, clients typically? Yeah, it's interesting. So there's and and, and I I've I've been asked to go speak at a variety of different industries that I don't yeah. have any expertise in at all. Sales is a universal language. So you can know your specifications about what it is that you do. For example, mm -hmm. I've got a, uh, a doctors that are in my program, one that does stem cell injections, for example, regenerative yeah. medicine. I don't know a yeah, thing. A mutual friend this. of ours, I think. Right. Yeah. Right. So Dr. Tate, uh, however, I've, I've been able to help John take the numbers of his business and literally triple them. And so wow. how do I do that? Um, for and, and it's not, it's, it's not magic. It's a question mm -hmm. of practice. Right. And so how important are, are, are the metrics? I, I'll give basic numbers. I like to measure four simple things. Okay. Lead. So we'll go into leads set appointments, the show up rate, and your close rate. So those four basics, lead, set, show, close. How many how many leads are you actually getting? And it's interesting because I'll ask people, okay, so out of 100 people that you speak to, how many of them purchase from you? And a lot of people say, I think it's about it's got to be around. And so right then and there I go, okay, so you don't know your number. Like, because if it's, I think it's about around, it's, it's 
nebulous. If you can tell me specifically how many people out of a hundred that you actually that actually purchased from you on your first visit, for example, and if you can say, yeah, it's 68. Well, boom, I know you know the number. So how many leads are you getting in? Then from and whatever you qualify as a lead. Then from there, how many people set an appointment? And then from their set rate, how many people actually show up? And then from the rate, how many people actually make a purchase? And then if they don't, what's your follow-up rate? And so these numbers need to be understood because if there's a if there's a place where there's friction and or resistance, then we can hone in and help you so that we can improve on that specific metric. So right. a lot of people go, well, hey, it's it's all about closing. Well, you, you still got to develop no like, and trust in all of that process, including someone who's curious enough to say, okay, I'm a lead now. Like I'm, I'm interested and I want to know a little bit right. more about what it is that you have to offer. So right. those numbers, once you have those down, Chris, then you can, again, you can look at what is it about the way that I'm having a conversation with someone because sales, it's a structured conversation, structured conversation in where the person that I'm speaking with feels compelled, to give me money for my product or service. And most people, they go, I don't need it. Like you said earlier, like there's a lot of people who go, I, I don't need sales training because I'm an expert in my field. And it's like, well, you could be the expert and you could know everything there is to know about, for example, funeral services. I did a workshop with a group. A wonderful woman had said to me, well, how long have you been in the funeral services industry, Joe? And right, she was challenging me. And I, I said, you know what? And I two-step process. I said, you know, no. Mary, I appreciate the fact that you're asking this question. Does my experience in the funeral services industry have anything to do with my ability to help master objections? And she said, well, I, I guess it doesn't. I said, exactly. Right. So again, I two-step process and it takes practice in the face of that yeah. to be able to comfortably have a conversation. And that's, that's acknowledged then question is the two-step process. That's right? it. Um, so look, let's, it. let's, let's jump in, let's jump into your kind of sales objective system. Sure. Um, and you know, kind of, if you if you don't mind doing an overview of it, Joe. Yeah. So, I mean, every the, the biggest challenge that a lot of professionals, and I'm, I, I think from from the experts of experts who are fine tuned, whether it's in industry or in services or in medical, you you have to understand that the conversation you have with someone will always lead to this this flow where you have rapport discovery, you go through pitch, you mention the price. And a lot of sales professionals will say, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, if you do, if you do everything right, you'll never run into an objection. I beg to differ. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I would say, you know what, no matter how good your pitch and discovery process is, people suffer from amnesia when you mention the price, especially if your price is higher ticket and there's nothing wrong with a higher price, especially if your service is vast. So when you mention your price, a lot of people are standoffish. Why? Because they're afraid. They're right. There's emotional response here. They're afraid to make the wrong decision. Right. And in some cases, people are afraid to make the right one because they either have to give something up or they have to sacrifice. You know, they suddenly, if if they're making an investment, well, suddenly it's like, well, I don't have cash flow to buy other things that I want. And people don't want to have delayed gratification. So all of these things. So what we do in, in terms of handling the objection is we help you manage emotional response. Like if I said to you, Chris, do you believe in what you have to offer? Absolutely. You, right. So because you believe it, you yeah. get point where if you mentioned to me your price and let's say you say your price is okay well joe it's going to be twenty thousand dollars well all of a sudden my response is well, well that's expensive or i can't afford it or uh uh chris i'm gonna have to think about it meanwhile you just told me you believe a hundred percent what you have to offer so why would somebody say i need to think about it or i need to speak to my spouse or i don't know if this is going to work so that emotional response that you as the person who's trying to help someone through what you're selling, mm -hmm. your emotional response gets away. So it's great that we believe in what we have to offer. The right. problem is, is that when emotions go up, intelligence goes down. 
<laughs> I like this that. Is, right? Yeah. So, That's the problem so, with talking with talking to poli- talking politics with people, <laughs> or, or or anything that you're passionate about. Right, right. And, yeah. and, and so I totally agree. And so what happens is suddenly that when the emotional responses come in, and it doesn't mean that you, what we do is help you get rid of emotion. That's not it at right. all. What we want you to do is help manage those emotions so sure. that in the face of it, and, and again, in the face of it, doing the two steps of acknowledge first so that you can, hey, you know what? I'm having a conversation with a person. And then I just want to understand. So I'm going to ask a question. And this way, and there's persuasive ways and ways to influence people, not to manipulate, to get them to see the light in terms of what we have to offer. And that takes practice. Yeah. And so understanding that, 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 that process of when we talk about communication, 55% of the way we communicate, Chris, is body language. 38% of the way we communicate is tone of voice. This is where the practice really comes in. I mean, mm-hmm. how often do people say, hey, what do I say when I when I hear I need to speak to my spouse about this? I can give you a script all you want. Right. How you say it and how your approach is and what your body language is, that's where the real communication takes place. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that's I think um, you know, it's challenging now in the age of, you know, Zoom and, and doing this. Um, but you, you can still utilize these same skills with Zoom, right? 100%. In fact, yeah. uh, you, you and I right now, you, it was interesting yeah. you, right before we got started, you made a decision to, oh, you know what, I'm going to stand up. Right? So what is what is standing up for you do when you're on a podcast? Yeah. So I think it gives me, um, it. it um, I'm trying to think here how to best convey this. Uh, it it compels me to be a little bit more energetic because I, right. I'm not real, I, I don't just sit down. I'm, I'm more engaged. So Correct. I think I present um, and, and do that a little bit better. So there's, there's times where you'll see people on the phone and they're, they're kicking back in their chair and their feet yeah. are up yeah. as opposed to, I tell people, yeah. Hey, if the phone rings, get out of the chair, stand yeah. up, yep. be attentive. Cause you just said something that's powerful. I'm more engaged. So how, if someone is your guest and they hear it in your voice, they see it. And in the world of zoom now, more than ever, we're using these technologies where people can see us, whether it's through video. And even if you can't see me, you can hear it in my voice. If I'm smiling, you can tell I'm smiling. Yeah. And and so standing up makes a huge difference. So we recommend this for anybody. If you're listening to this, try this for the next couple of weeks, every that you're on a opportunity to have a conversation with someone where you're actually quote unquote selling yeah. stand up Love you'll it. see a huge difference in your energy yeah. because highest energy wins because it's attractive yeah. so there's a model that i like to to talk about chris and it's called ask attract sell keep what am i attracting and part of the, the attract model is not just you know am i you know, attracting with Facebook ads and social media. I'm talking more so what's my energy like? Am I in alignment with my thoughts and my feelings before I get onto this next sales conversation with someone? Yes. Yes. Because if somebody is not in alignment, they'll pick it up. It's palpable. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, so I, I sold Cutco, Cutco knives, and as some oh, people yeah. listening here, we have. I love uh, those. I have a yeah. Cutco. Uh, I have a Cutco fishing knife. It's my oh, yeah. favorite. Knife. Oh, that's that, that blade super sharp is amazing. Too. It is. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah, those yeah those fishing knives are ridiculous. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, it's a great product, and but I call. I had to cold call, you know, and sell when I was 19 years old. I just turned 19, and um. But I had a little sticky note, Joe, and you know what that sticky note had on it. What's that? It had, a, it had a little smiley face that I drew. I love it. And whenever I, before I made a phone call, I'd look at that sticky note and I'd smile and and, and make that call. Uh, but something else I I, I watched, and I, I used this in a sales training that that I did um, for one of our, our classes here. Um, and I'm, I'm her name's uh, Amy Cuddy. Have you seen Amy's presentation? She's from Harvard not. and she talks about confidence and there's, there's body positions. So oh, there's the, I there's have, the traditional. Yes, I have seen this. She yeah. did a Ted talk. Did she not? She did a Ted talk. That's right. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Yeah, look it up. If you're, if you're hearing this for the first time, Yeah, it's great. But there's, there's the traditional, like kind of arms over your head, power position. Yeah. And then she's like, well, you can't always do that in front of an audience, stand there with your arms up. 
Um, yeah. And like Joe's doing now, hands on your hips are, are powerful. Um, you know, Wonder Woman like or a, Superman pose. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I yeah. will tell you what. So she did this study and the body language changed body chemistry. So if Testosterone. you, yeah, if you don't, yeah, I know that's, that, that can be a four letter word with some people here these days, but the fact of the matter is, um, like you said, life's an energy game, Joe, and people can see it, they can feel it. And, and Amy Cuddy studied this and found that it actually is provable that just these, these power positions that you have do change your body chemistry. And that's one of the things that you know, I learned was that you, what you just said, <clears throat> the higher your testosterone, the calmer you are and the more confident you are. Right. Not only are you confident, but you're calmer because of that confidence. Indeed. And that's one, one of the traits of people with low testosterone is they tend to be more anxious because they don't have that confidence. So, you know, smile, put your arms up, listen to Amy Cuddy's presentation, hands on your hips if you need to. Um, and you can even do that in the bathroom before a presentation if you don't want yeah. people to see you or if you're on the phone, you can you can stand there and do that. So I absolutely love that. Um, so this is, this is- Priming. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, totally. It's a, it's and, a great practice. Yeah. And it absolutely, it absolutely works. So I love this. So just to recap, um, you know, you were talking about leads, set appointments, show ups and, and closes, and this yes. might be, this might be a little different depending on what industry you're in. Yep. Um, but I, I was writing down what it, what it would mean to us. And it's, it's very, it's very similar. Um, and I actually have a spreadsheet. So I've always had spreadsheets tracking my sales, um, and, and doing that. And you you brought that up as well, Joe, that it's really important to to measure your progress. I always said to my sales team, what's measured matters. So we always yeah. would measure those things that would have a direct impact on what they were doing. And I always knew I was not doing my job well if I said, hey, we're, we're measuring this. And the team would, you know, they wouldn't really care about it. It's like, well, why do they not care about that? Maybe we're measuring the wrong thing. Mm. I, I, it always bothered me when sales leadership, they would... They would measure something, but they wouldn't align it with compensation. Right. And I was like, well, if it matters so much, why don't you align it with compensation? So um, why is it so important, Joe, to measure these things? What have you seen with your clients? And what's some advice that you can give to, um, let's say, small business owners that are trying to figure out what to measure and how to incentivize their teams to focus on specific things? Yeah, that's yeah. we got a lot to unpack. So what comes to mind, Chris, is uh, what comes to mind is first things first, I'm going to ask it, for the listener, do you actually have a, this is where it's going to make people possibly uncomfortable. Do you actually have a structure? What I would call a script. The moment that people like your script, they go, oh God, no, I don't want to be a robot. I don't want, and yeah. I'm just going to say, take pause. Remember, what is sales? It is a structured conversation. So the idea behind a script is simply this is the roadmap. Love it. In yeah. in in a in a professional, top professionals in any sales endeavor, they have a script. And the beauty of it is they practiced it so much, yeah. they don't need the script. They you know what know- I you know what I loved? I said, I tell people the more you rehearse your script, the less you scripted need. you sound. You got it. So think of it from a perspective of an Oscar winning performance. Okay. They get a script. They have to practice it. And they practice it and they practice it and they do rehearsals. And then it's okay. Here lights, camera action. And they'll take, a, they'll do a few takes. The difference is with sales. You don't get takes. You've, the, you, you're doing it live. And so the purpose of the script up front, which have a template, what we call a template. So yeah. there's your template. You got you know several questions. And what is sales? Like telling isn't selling. What is sales? What is the purpose of conversation? It's building rapport. Under how important is it for me to understand what the challenges are for mm-hmm. my guest? Yeah. How important is it for me to understand how they feel? What are the fears? What questions can I ask so that I could get a better understanding? At which point I then ETR earn the right to pitch. And this is where people make the fatal mistake. You're all experts. So somebody comes to you and they go, I'm interested in what they do is they pitch Mm. and they haven't earned the right to get there. Even if you're a specialty 
an expert, you're a doctor. And like, if you were to just stop and ask a few questions and build rapport, yeah. which is building a relationship, discover what the specific emotional responses are. In other words, so tell me how, and I use a thing called TED and we practice TED. TED mm -hmm. stands for sort of TED Talks, which is technology, entertainment, design. Yeah. Well, in our world of sales, we practice, tell me, Chris, explain to me. Chris, describe to me. And we just use that in a, in a way so I tell, get explain, you to open describe, up. Yeah. Right. So tell me a little bit about this. Explain to me what it would be like and even future pacing in 12 months from now. Tell me how you would feel now that this has been solved. What does that look like to you? Oh, that's great. And then just that's, listen. Yeah. yeah. So, so these are skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, how often have you heard someone who is a salesperson and always talk? Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, coming from the medical device industry, and there might be some people that are shaking their head side to side or up and down when they hear this, but mm -hmm. you have so much access to your clients. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost a detriment because right. the rapport is built and the the sales skills tend, tend to kind of erode away and, right. and do that. And it's a very, it's a very fine balance um, when it, when it comes to that sort of thing. And you see, it's like a pre, it's like a presentation. Um and I don't know, I always try to try to take the approach. I'd say, all right, well, let's learn about, you know, Dr. Marku and his his objectives for his business, in this case, practice, and go right. through that. And, you know, it, I think it took it took a lot, takes a lot of people off guard when you do what you just said, Joe, which is you build rapport, you earn the right to pitch at that point. Correct. Um, and to me, it's like if if you're if you're listening and you have something to sell, chances are, you know, like when I was selling cutco knives. You have a lot of knives, right? Right. So, you know, Joe might say, Hey, I, I love this fishing knife where, you know, Mary, um, Joe's neighbor, you know, she she loves to cook. Right. And and she wants a she has a different set of knives. If you just throw all the knives out and say, Hey, here's here's all these great things. And Mary here's how they're say, built, and yeah. here's their warranty. And this Mary is the steel care. that we yeah. and this, like people don't care. Yeah. yeah, she may not care, but um, yeah, but if you learn what, what makes sense for them and take your, you know, take your, uh, take your set of knives out and figure out which is the right knife for them. It makes it a lot right. easier and it's, it's just so much easier. It, it, That's why I hate so the ice easier. sell ice to an Eskimo is just a terrible expression. It is. It it's is. Like, well, why do you People, need ice, sir? <laughs> right. That, that whole thing, if you've seen the Wolf of Wall Street, sell me this yeah. pen. Well, not everybody is in the market for a pen. That's one. right. And number two, before I would try to even sell you the pen, I want to find out. Well, what are you going to use the pen for? Do you yeah. currently have a pen? How what, what are you going to be writing on? What kind yeah. of stationery? What what is the document? Is it something special? Is it a, like a marriage certificate? Is it a divorce contract? I mean, you know what I mean? Like these are these are different <laughs> things that have different meaning to people. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And so, absolutely. you know, do you yeah. want a Bic pen or do you want to be able to get a Mona? I mean, there's right. So I love I love these gel pens from uh, Unib. I'll tell you, these things are my favorite. Yeah, um, I take three from my attorney every time. Every time we work <laughs> with them, and that's that's they're still the most expensive pens I've, I have I own, but they were free. Um, all right, so um, we've talked kind of through some of your sales objective system, Joe. And um, again, we're gonna we're gonna share with people uh, how to get that here. Um, but Tell us a little bit about why why the SOS Dojo. Why why a dojo? Why the name behind SOS Dojo? Yeah, that I love it. So I'm a fan of martial arts and the culture of of that in terms of the respect of of that. Now, mo a lot of people may not know what a dojo is, and a dojo is a place if you practice martial arts, it is a place where people from varying levels, whether you're a white belt all the way to a multiple black belt everybody comes to this specific place to practice and so it's great because you develop faster in that environment there's four things that you need to be able to develop mastery one is a valid environment so we i've created this place called the dojo which is online on zoom yeah. or when i do a live event and in that valid environment i let people know this is the part of my logo is you know the, yeah. the cupping of the fist yeah. Right. It's this, this is, this is a sign of respect to one another. And I tell people this valid environment, it's the safest place to make mistakes. 
Nice. Because you're going to make yeah. mistakes here yeah. in the dojo as opposed to, and it's better to make mistakes here than on a sales call or sales conversation. Yeah. So valid environment. That's what the dojo does. Number two is we're going to put in repetitions because the, the thing that people hate the most about sales yeah. are the objections because yeah. they don't- It's they, uncomfortable. Some, yeah, yeah. When somebody says no to you, how do you feel? You yeah. feel- Man. rejected. You yeah. feel disappointed. You feel sometimes embarrassed, especially if you're in front of a board of people. Yeah. Or you might feel sad or disappointed. You might feel stressed because you you may need to to make this sale to be able to you know, make the month, for example. Yeah. So you need repetition. Then you need timely feedback. And that's the other benefit of the dojo and the concept of training live. It's not, hey, read this book or hey, watch this video. Do it live so that you get timely feedback or what we call course corrections. So yeah. if we notice, hey, your body language is a little off or, and we literally dig deep to what's your tone? Are you using an upward inflection or using a downward inflection? Because certain wow. questions have bigger yeah. impact with a downward inflection. Yeah. And then finally, it's deliberate practice. So when I say deliberate practice, it's, you're not practicing with your wife or your friend. You're practicing with somebody with a skill set. You're not doing it in front of the mirror. You're not doing it with the dog. Deliberate practice means you're doing it with other people that are, again, better than yeah. you are currently. So if you're yeah. if you're a white belt and you're practicing with a black belt, you time collapse the process. Yeah, and so like what's that. interesting is we've we've been able to develop in our pro program anybody who's a black belt has been a student. And then when they re receive their black belt, then what they do is they now teach it. So Chris, if you want to master something, teach it. Teach it. Absolutely. And then it's, yeah. it's amazing. So now yeah. we, we've got entrepreneurs. We've got, I, I mean, I, I even have a chiropractor who now is teaching other people this skill set. Still has his own business. Yeah. And what's great is he's now able to teach his own team this process and scale. Yeah. That's yeah, fantastic. Awesome. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. And that's why I think coaching is so important. You know, I have a coach, you know, you know him, yeah. you know, Craig, which yes. is, uh, yeah. which is My coach one of the well. reasons. Yeah. Which is one of the reasons we're connected and you're here yeah. today on the show. You, Craig had you train his whole team. Yeah. And still, still have yeah. two of his salespeople in there, one I, guy over a couple of years now. Yeah. Which I love. Yeah. And when you have to coach somebody, we have to help train somebody. It causes you to look in the mirror and say, well, wait a minute. Am I, am I doing this? Am I right. doing it the right way? And yes. what I also love is sometimes, and you know, I've seen this, um, you know, if you look at MMA and you look at some of the younger people coming up, they have, they have new moves. They have new skills that, yes. that you can learn from if you've been around a long time. Yeah. I mean, and this is just the thing. Sales is constantly evolving, yeah. uh, both from what's happening online, wh how do we deal with social media? Yeah. So that the lead generation is not just throw right. money out to ads. Yeah. For me, it's how do I how do I get more referrals? How do I grow mm -hmm. my business organically? How do I create a delighted customer? A delighted customer. A satisfied or happy customer, I'll tell you what, that's easy to come by. If I get somebody who's delighted, they become my ambassador. So how do that. how do I create raving fans? Well, if I create an excellent sales experience or purchasing experience, and that again is a skill set. Yeah. Then growth happens. And so that's really the nature of all of this. I love it. So, Joe, what's the best way to get a hold of you? What's the best way to um, uh, download some of the stuff that we talked about? Uh, you mentioned a Facebook group before we, we hopped on today. Yeah. You could go to the Sales Objection System Facebook group. It's a free Facebook group. Feel free. We'll put that link I in have, the notes here. Yep. Yeah. Feel free. I would love for people to come in. I have a ton of free resources there, guides, videos, and whatnot. And it's interactive. So you feel free to come into the group, go to Sales Objection System Dojo uh, on Facebook. Just look for that and you'll you'll be able to see us there. You can also follow me on uh, face, uh, on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or, or on LinkedIn. It's at Co Coach Joe Marcoux. At, at Coach, Coach Joe, Joe Marcoux. Perfect. And we're going to put yes. all this stuff in the uh, in the show notes here, Joe. Um, and and um, one one thing, Chris, for your listeners, if if yeah. you're curious about what the objection system, the dojo is, and you want to try it out, and just hey, I want to practice this for myself. Come join us for a free session. It's not a sales pitch, 
come and try it and experience it for yourself. There's a group of different professionals, anywhere from retailers to doctors to online coaches. It's a place where the language of sales gets practiced. So like you said earlier, Chris, it's a place where you can keep that action. I think that's perfect. And I saw you just put that link in um, the chat here. So I'm going to share that in the show notes as well. Joe, yeah. this has been awesome. It's been great to see you again. I'll see you, um, see you in Mexico. Real, real so- oh yeah. I'll see you real soon. Um, shortly, uh, shortly after this episode goes out. All right, man. Thanks for having Thank me. Thank you, my friend. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you found this episode valuable. Now I have one more thing to give to you. We have a page for my coaching clients where you can get a free copy of my book, as well as much more from previous guests on the show. Just check out nextlevelincome.com slash coaching to get a free copy of my book, audio book, and much more. I'll send you a copy of my book and cover all the shipping costs as a thank you for listening to the podcast. Also, please like, share, and take just 90 seconds to give us a rating on Apple Podcasts.